This video is an introduction to our section on exponential equations and growth. Recall linear growth has a constant growth rate like this red line increasing by the same amount. Quadratic growth decreases to a minimum then rises again or vice versa like this blue parabola in the middle. And for exponential growth, we refer to a quantity that increases or decreases by the same percentage or factor for each unit of time. Often that'll give us a graph like this uh, green one on the right, something that increases faster and faster and faster as time or your x values increase. This is the general equation we'll use to model exponential growth. a equals p times 1 plus r to the t power. And notice the variable t is in the exponent position, which is what makes this an exponential equation, and it's also what will require some new algebra skills to work with. In this equation, p is standing for the initial value, or when we're talking about money, sometimes we'll call it the principal. R is the growth rate, usually given as a percent, but in the equation, we convert it to a, per, a decimal first. T is the amount of time, often in years. A is the future value, that is the total amount in the account or the total amount of population or whatever you're measuring after T time units have passed. Two common applications of exponential models are compound interest and population growth. For compound interest, suppose I invest $3,000 in an account earning 4% interest compounded monthly. Then I can model it with an exponential equation and answer questions like, how long until the value of the account reaches $15,000? For population, suppose I have a population of 12 rabbits with an esti estimated growth rate of about 2.2% per year. I could model this with an exponential equation and maybe answer the question, how many rabbits will I have in four years? There are two new algebra skills we'll have to apply in this section. First, the root property is used to solve for a variable that's being raised to an exponent. For example, consider this equation, x to the seventh equals 465. The question is what number, when we raise it to the seventh power, will give us 465? We can isolate the x value by getting rid of the seventh power, and we do that by applying a seventh root. Just like all of our algebra skills, whatever you do to one side, you wanna do the same thing to the other side, so we're gonna apply the seventh root to both sides of the equation. The seventh root of x to the seventh is just x, and the seventh root of 465, well that's calculator work essentially. Plug it into the calculator, and in this case approximate it. So we're claiming that if you take 2.405 and we raise it to the seventh power, we'll get approximately 465. Similarly, if we wanna solve an equation where x is the variable, we need to use logarithms. Logarithms are a complex subject that have several applications and rules, but essentially logarithms are inverses of exponentials. We will use a very specific application of the logarithm called the exponent property of logarithms. Consider this equation, two to the x equals seven. The question is, what power do you raise two to in order to get seven? We know that two to the second power is four and two to the third power is eight, so the power must be some number between two and three. What we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a logarithm to both sides initially. So log of two to the x equals log of seven. And then we're gonna take an advantage of the exponent property of log. And that property says, if you have a logarithm of some number raised to a power, you can actually extract the power out of the exponent position and multiply it by the logarithm instead. So this third step here, the x has been removed from the exponent position and now it's being multiplied by log of two. Now log of two and log of seven are just numbers. So if you wanna solve for x in this case, you undo this multiplication by dividing both sides by log of two. And you get that x is log of seven divided by log of two. Luckily, the calculator will approximate this for us. We can plug in log of seven, log of two pretty easily and divide them. And we come up with a number about 2.807. So we're claiming that if you take the number two and you raise it to the power 2.807, you'll get approximately seven as a result. That's it for now. We'll go into more detail in the video lecture for this section, but for now, thanks for watching.